He is smart. He is experienced. He is an encyclopedia on basketball, and he is my friend. Let's welcome in Doug Gottlieb, the newest member of Fox Sports Radio and FS1. Hi, Doug. You also forgot to mention, Colin, this guy always has the best shoes on ever. Yeah, Dougie, you know, Doug wears the colorful shoes. I wear them because uh, when I first met Doug, my wife makes fun of me, and I'm like, I want to stay youthful. I could wear the black shoes, but I show him your shoes, Dougie. Dougie Fresh has got some nice kicks on there. These are the Nike Hirachis, which is one of the great decisions in the history of the great company of Nike was to bring back the Hirachis. Incredibly popular in the early 90s. Uh, people remember the Fab Five wore the Hirachis. Yes. And, of course, the Fab Five, uh, they, they broke all sorts of, whether it's color barriers, like suburban kids, city kids, everybody loved them and loved the Hirachis. The running shoes are great. And, of course, uh, it matches the ensemble as well. Well, first of all, you know, I'm very excited because you're one of my closer friend, friends in the industry, and I rely on you. And I, and I say this all the time <clears throat> when it comes to basketball issues. I text you a lot. And what do you make of this, 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 this? In fact, I text Doug Gottlieb on Wisconsin. Oh, he's uh, the guy. No, well, I text him and I said, Doug. I'm gonna, I, I think Wisconsin's going to beat Nova because they're experienced and they got veterans and they've been here before. And he's like, he goes, they could win three or four games or they could lose the first. He goes, but I think it's a good dark horse pick. And if he'd have said it sucks, I wouldn't have done it. So I lean on you all the time. And they actually now, let's talk about this, because Duke lost. This is what's crazy about the tournament. Yeah. Because Duke now lost. I like the way Wisconsin matches up. Is Wisconsin going to end up in the final four? Look, it, it, it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility. And, and the logic behind it is, first, anybody who says, well, you guys are all wrong about Wisconsin. That's why they were an eight seed. Like, okay, but to those of us who watched, you know, they played two elite teams in the non-conference. They played uh, Creighton, who back then was elite. Then they had a player hurt. Game wasn't, Mo Watson, game wasn't close. They lost in Omaha, tough place to play. Then in Hawaii, in Maui, in the finals of the Maui Gym Invitational, they got beat badly by North Carolina. They didn't look the part. And then they were kind of scuttling down the stretch. They lost to Iowa at home, a young team. They lost Northwestern at home. Uh, they also weren't healthy. And, and I wasn't sure if they really liked each other. But you get to the end of the season, you get to the tournament, and now... If, if you don't like each other, it's okay. Like, look, we're playing for our, our basketball lives. And yes. you have Bronson Koenig, who yep. played great this past weekend. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, he wasn't healthy early in the year, but he's also, he's played in these games. He's made big shots in the tournament before. Yeah. That's how they beat Xavier last year in the tournament. That's how, you have a guy who started in the national championship game. He's not scared of Villanova. And then you have Nigel Hayes, Perfect. who was trying to show everybody's a three-point shooter early in the season. Now he just gets back to, I'm just going to play and try and win. Uh, yeah, look, uh, and, and Greg Gard's done a remarkable job considering he took over midseason last year and they were yeah. a disaster and turned it around. So are they a favorite? Probably not. They still have some of the same flaws in their DNA. Uh, but but what makes this tournament magical is that a lot of teams, it, it, like, for instance, West Virginia ends up fa facing a Notre Dame team that apparently has never practiced for the press. <laughs> so, you know, what I... It's it, hard on one day. I mean, I'll just tell you, like, for Gonzaga, it's, it's, it's easier because they have a week to prepare. Like, you can practice for a press all year. You can't practice for one. It's not just one press. Like, that's the thing. Like, Bob Huggins, you think he's sitting over there, huge belly, screaming, yelling, hey, get out there and press. Like, there's one thing. <laughs> if you watch the game, they had four different types of pressure. Yeah. Start the game, they have a man on the ball. Second half, they have a man safety. And then occasionally what they would do is, they, what, what Bob Huggins told me was, you know, cut off the head of the snake, which is Matt Farrell's the one true ball handler for Notre Dame. They just wouldn't let him have the ball. That's right. Like, they just, like, we're playing defense. It was almost like boxing one on a full court. And it was, it's brilliant strategy. It's the reason he's won 800 games. But so what happens is you watch film, and you're like, damn, we got 24 hours to prepare for a press we don't see, the type of athleticism we don't see, grown men. And, oh, yeah, by the way, they play this way every game. Yeah. We play this way once. Nope. It's a little easier for Gonzaga. Um, so Doug Gottlieb is joining us. So I want to go to some big stories. Okay. I, I've said this before, is that when you get to the top of the food chain, you know, when you get to the Sean Hannity level, you're just compared to Bill O'Reilly. Nobody cares how you relate to the local guy. You, you're playing in rare rarefied air. Calipari's in that Shashevsky rarefied air. And I was saying that as Nick Saban in a tougher, more violent sport where it's attrition, football is winning two, three, four national titles. Calipari's the one and done king. And he got one title in eight years. And I don't think this team's a title team. And if he doesn't win, there's this growing kind of narrative that guy can coach or guy can recruit Dude's got one title in eight years. It's not enough one and done. Is it a fair criticism of him? I think it's a fair criticism because they've had so many opportunities. I'd also say it's it's fair to point out that 
part of it, there's been a change in college basketball where you can win with men against the boys, frankly, though they're ridiculously talented boys of a Kentucky. I mean, look at Gonzaga, for example. Nigel Williams Goss is a fourth year junior transfer from Washington. Shemek Karnowski is a fifth year senior. They're in, old. In, they're, like you look and they have Zach Collins comes off the bench. They have some youth, but you're throwing out fourth, fifth year, 22, 23 year old men, and you're going against Malik Monk and De'Aaron Fox. They're, they're, they're 19. Correct. So so some of that works against him. Um, and last year was the first year, I believe, since Arkansas won it. Todd Day was a draft pick where they didn't have a pro on that team. I mean, Daniel Ochefu made an NBA team, but he's not really a pro. Um, so the, the, the growing sense, though, is that the, the trend is now you can compete with Kentucky when they have a young team if you have an older group of just below NBA players. And yeah. maybe the best mix is Kansas. Oh, no, that, that's the best team, right? Well, no, it's – well – you know, they, they lost their backup center, so they they may be a little slim up front playing against Purdue. But what they have is they have a, a four-year starter uh, in Frank Mason as point guard. But then this year they add in a, a pro in Josh Jackson. Yeah. So you have youth and you have age and, and experience. And that's what I like with them. They can beat you with the kids. They can beat you perimeter. They can beat you. Know, I, I want to say we got about five big things here. Okay, go. So Doug Gottlieb is new at FS1, Fox Sports Radio. We're happy as heck. I'm going to take a quick break here because I want to get to the crazy wife of Greg Marshall and Steve okay. Alford used. UCLA, and uh, those are big topics and why you came to Fox Sports. Don't go anywhere. This is The Hurt. He's my friend, Doug Gottlieb. He is now starting April 24th. His show will follow mine. The Doug Gottlieb Show will follow The Hurt on Fox Sports Radio. It'll air 3 to 6 Eastern, Fox Sports Radio and iHeart Radio on more than 150 stations. He'll also be on this show, Speak for Yourself, Undisputed, uh, a variety of other FS1 shows. So Doug Gottlieb's here. I could not be happier. Congratulations to you. Let's start. And this is a story that, again, you know the inside and I don't. Greg Marshall's a great coach, but he stays at Wichita State way too long. If you're a great coach like Greg Marshall, I see his wife this weekend, and she's out there, and she's in a press conference, and she's loony. And I'm thinking, all right, Doug, what's the story behind the story? This, the story is this is why Greg Marshall, one of the reasons that he was at Winthrop and went to the NCAA tournament seven times. Like, look, there's, there's, other, there's other little issues. Like, he once upon a time actually left to take the College of Charleston job, and then on his way back to pick up his stuff in Rock Hill, South Carolina, where Winthrop's located, he changed his mind. So that, that's part of it. That's, but one, Greg's, Greg's way about him, in which he turns everybody he's working for into wor them, them working for him, right? right? Like his athletic director told me once, a uh, previous athletic director said, hey, look, I, I'm not his boss. He thinks I'm, he, uh, he's my boss. And then you have the factor of his, the crazy wife. I think this is just a snippet into how does a guy who's so incredibly talented, I, I want to make sure that that's, a, you, that's, that's out there, okay? He's great. He's a great coach, okay? They, they had... Uh, slightly inferior. They had inferior talent to Kentucky. They gave Kentucky everything they wanted. Kentucky had to make two great defensive plays late. Two block shots on three point shots, right? Like, who does that? Who wins a game that way? <laughs> Kentucky just had better dudes, right? At the end of the day, ain't X's and O's, it was Jimmy's and Joe. Right. He's a great coach. But when you have crazy wife, when you have crazy coach who is really difficult to put into. When you go to an athletic department as a head men's basketball coach, you aren't the most important person. The football and, guy is. Correct. That's who <laughs> makes all the money. And so, one, he's making $4 million a year. That's hard for anybody to buy him out. Two, crazy wife. Three, crazy Greg Marshall. Four, uh, the fact is he has... Uh, tinkered with jobs, and then changed his mind the last time. That's why he is where he is. Steve Alford, UCLA. It's in Bel Air. It's beautiful. But as you said last week on my radio show, sometimes they fake it as a national power. I know if he goes to Indiana, Indiana cares more. They're Kansas. It means a lot to them. If I'm Steve Alford, i got to consider Indiana. Will he take it? Deuces. Gone. Gone. Yes. Why wouldn't you? It's, it's in, first of all, it's one of the top six jobs in college basketball. Yeah. Second of all, and this is the most important thing, it's home. It is home. And in recruiting is about telling a story. Hey, let me tell you about what your life is going to be like if you come play for UCLA, if you come play for Indiana. The difference in UCLA and Indiana is he's telling his story at Indiana. He's telling somebody else's story at UCLA. Um, you, you have a wellspring of talent in Indianapolis that you can, you can, uh, you can pluck from. And much like UCLA in which the, the, for, the former players don't like him, the former players at Indiana hated Tom Crean. He just he couldn't 
He just couldn't. And Tom Crean's a good human being. Yes. He just could not find a way to crack the code because he wasn't one of them. And that's really, really important. It is. Especially in a basketball crazy state of Indiana. And I think he carries that bias against UCLA. They're flying a banner over the top of, of the football practice last year, wanted him to be fired when he had lost too many guys to the NBA, 15 and 17 season. Yeah. And then I think you do factor in the LeVar Ball factor. Um, you lose Lonzo who's the best of the balls. He's incredible. He's every bit as good in college as LeVar thinks he is. But um, Jello's coming in next year, and Jello's a nice mid-major player, and yet he carries the burden of the ball name, and his dad's saying he's a one-and-done. All those things factored in. His sons graduate from UCLA. I'm out. I'm back to Indiana where I grew up. I was a member of the last national championship team. I'm the connection to the night. There's era. a hotel named after him. I mean, it's 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 a <laughs> and they're gonna they're gonna pay you more money than UCLA. UCLA will help him pack. Wow. And and UCLA, in turn, my guess will be they'll hire Earl Watson, who's coaching with the Suns, who gets the experience, and yet he will bring back all of those former players from uh, from the Howland era from uh, maybe even from the Hazard era, but definitely from the Hallen and, and Herrick era and the Steve Lavin era because they want to see Earl Watson, one of their own, that yeah. young, youthful vibe yeah. and energy. Okay, so the NBA's got this whole deal now. 500 more times this year, a player didn't play without an injury. It's a non-illness injury, you know, DNP. 500 more, and we're in March Okay, uh, everybody's saying it's the science. I think there's, I think there's something going on here. What do you make of it? I think the media is as much, we're as much to blame as anybody because we create players' legacies based upon two things. We create it based upon what your stats are in the regular season and how competitive you are in the postseason. And you're more likely to put up uh, great stats if instead of like you, you've mentioned several times over, uh, LeBron James plays more minutes than anybody in the NBA. Okay. Why not just play 20 minutes on, on nights, you know, <laughs> coast play twice as met, play all the games, but just some nights you go out and you play the first when you're loose, you play early in the, in the third quarter coming out of halftime so that you're loose and then play down the stretch in the fourth quarter. If you need to win, why don't they? Because they want their legacy is created based upon their stats in the regular season. Nobody wants to only play 20 minutes because you can't put up 30 points in 20 minutes. It's nearly impossible. You can't get a triple double if you're playing 20 minutes. Uh, and then the legacy is created based upon whether or not you win in the postseason. And more postseasons have been decided in the NBA based upon who's healthy than who's actually good. That's really interesting, too, Doug. Is it, 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 What's funny about this is we've always thought of football as an attrition sport. But baseball, are your, are your arms ready to go? And in, and in basketball, we've had Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade. These championships are decided. Andrew Bogut well, last you, year. You, wait, you go back historically. What brought down the Lakers the first time? That's when... Uh, Byron Scott pulled a hamstring. That was that was a huge injury. You look, Larry Bird's back uh, held the Celtics back from winning more NBA titles. You go back historically and you look, and the dom the teams that won championships were usually the healthiest teams. Even Kobe and Shaq, when they weren't getting along and they lost the Detroit Pistons, remember that the like uh, you know Rick Fox got hurt in that series. That changed the series yes. forever. So. Injuries play as big a factor as who is actually good in the NBA playoffs. And, and, and you mentioned, I mean, look, look at the Warriors when they won the NBA title two years ago. Not only were the Cavs not healthy, but Drew Holiday didn't play the first couple of games. Mike Conley didn't play. Um, you know, they, they didn't have to play Chris Paul because the Clippers are always cursed with injuries in the playoffs. So injuries decide that. And because we decide who is great and the all-time greats based upon how you do in the postseason – I think at least some of the accountability yeah. has to be on us in the media. No, I, I, I think you're right. So Doug Gottlieb is now at Fox Sports. He will debut Monday, April 24th. Following the Hurt on Fox Sports Radio, he's going to be on iHeart Radio as well, 150 stations. That's going to grow like crazy. And he's one of my best friends in the business, so this is great. Uh, and we argue all the time, but that's why we like each other. All right, so We're you can't— Booker. What? We're Booker. What's that? It's a it's a Yiddish term. It means it means family that's not blood. Say it again. Mishbuka. 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 Didn't don't she, don't overdo it. Didn't she, didn't she star in the hills, or was that Misha Barton? Uh, <laughs> no, and dude, that's I, the look, wrong I gotta, show. Uh, first, I got to tell you, I I can't thank you enough for everything you've done for me in my, my career. I, I mean that, and I've never gotten a chance to follow you. Like I've been in this time slot now for nine years, but you were always earlier. And so now you put you know Clay Travis in the mo morning, who's crushing it, right? Yeah. Into Dan, into you, into me. I mean that's death row. Do you're you're going to be Jeff Kent? He always hit better. 
right after Barry Bonds. You're gonna <laughs> you're gonna go to three forty hitter. You've always been a three eleven. Like when you throw when you throw out craziness and when you when you throw out crazy, I like whoa whoa whoa. Colin, I, it was early. It's Los Angeles. He didn't have his coffee. Uh, I, I don't know what it was, but I like dude. I I can't thank you enough. And then it's 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 amazing to me to. You come back to a place, and so many people we work with at the other place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it was all the it was all the fun people. <laughs> and <laughs> they're all here. And uh, and and then you know I know you pointed out yesterday Bristol, Connecticut is the reason for the exodus. Yeah. But I also think that you know people make the place right. Like yeah. the reason that I fell in love with Stillwater, Oklahoma, was the people that I met there. Sure. Including my wife. The reason that look my my mom. I got 15 seconds. Mom is gonna live down the street, but but <laughs> all the people here. Are just have been incredible to me, so I'm so happy to be aboard. And by the way, look at the lighting, look at the suit. Has Doug ever looked better? You look no, great, I have Doug. not. Man, Doug. the makeup. I mean, look at all this hair. Uh, I didn't have the hair thing that you had when you came here. <laughs> I need to get that. You had to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs>